There are astronauts in space right now. They're on the International Space Station. And I don't know about you, but I would love to join them. The thing is though, I do wonder what would happen to my body in space? To find out, we are back with another edition of GSC at Home. My name is Niall, and I'm part of the astronomy team at Glasgow Science Centre's Planetarium. So what does happen to the human body in space if you're an astronaut? Well, you'll actually grow a little taller. Without Earth's gravity compressing your spine, your body relaxes and stretches out. This means that astronauts can grow up to two inches taller in space. Unfortunately, this effect doesn't last. Back down on Earth, gravity compresses you again, and this means that your height slowly goes back to normal. You can actually see a smaller version of this effect here on Earth, and we can do an experiment. All you need is a tape measure, something to mark your height with, and a friend to help measure you. Firstly, measure your height as soon as you wake up in the morning. Take another measurement at noon, and finally, measure yourself one last time just before you go to bed. What did you notice? You should see that in the morning, you're at your tallest, and throughout the day, you slowly get smaller. This is because when you lie down in bed, Earth's gravity isn't pulling your head towards your toes anymore, and your spine can decompress and relax, meaning that you wake up a little bit taller. On the International Space Station, astronauts aren't free-floating in space. Instead, they are in microgravity. That is a lot less gravity than we feel on the surface of Earth. That microgravity means astronauts are in a constant state of freefall, a bit like if they jumped out of a plane. They are constantly falling towards Earth, but due to its curvature, always just missing. This makes astronauts feel weightless, and astronauts say weightlessness is one of the best things about going into space. It makes you feel like you can actually fly. When you first arrive on the space station though, you probably won't want to fly around too much. For your first few days in space, you actually feel a little bit sick. In a way, it's actually a form of travel sickness that you might feel in a car, in a plane, or even on a boat. This is because your body uses gravity to work out which way is up and which way is down. NASA calls this space adaption sickness. But don't worry, your body soon gets used to it, and after a few days, you feel lots better. You'll then begin to notice that your bones and muscles weaken. Without gravity exerting on them, bone density drops by 1% per month in space. It requires very little energy to move in space as well. This means that your muscles begin to lose strength and endurance. To combat this, astronauts have to work out for two hours every day on the space station. They use specially designed treadmills and weights that they can tie themselves to so they don't float away. Your heart is also a muscle, and just like the other muscles in your body, it gets smaller in space. On Earth, gravity helps pull blood down towards your legs, while your heart works extra hard to push blood upwards towards your head. In space, without gravity's help, your legs begin to get smaller, and your upper body and head begin to swell due to the extra fluid being pushed upwards. Scientists call this puffy face bird leg syndrome. The pressure around your head also means pressure on your eyes, and this can lead to vision problems in space. Once you've got used to the conditions, what is life like for an astronaut on the space station? How do they eat and drink? Water acts very strangely in microgravity, so they use water bags and straws, a little bit like cartons of juice. They have to be careful though not to let it escape, or else it might float away. Oh. 
<sighs> they need to eat, but they don't have any plates, because food would just float away. Instead, they use things like tortilla wraps to keep that food together. They also have dehydrated meals, where you just add water and then it's ready to eat. They need to sleep, but they can't use normal beds or else they would float away. Instead, they Velcro themselves in sleeping bags attached to the wall. The space station orbits the Earth once every 90 minutes. This means they get 16 sunsets and sunrises every day. This really affects astronauts' circadian rhythm. That is the internal system that tells you when to wake up and when to go to sleep. Astronauts describe it as a very extreme form of jet lag. Every 45 minutes, the sun is either rising or setting. And now the question you've all been waiting for. How do you go to the toilet in space? Well, astronauts need to learn how to use a specially designed space toilet. What do you think would happen to pee and poo if you tried going to the toilet normally? It would float everywhere. In order to stop that, astronauts use special adapters for liquid and solid waste, and they both rely on suction to stop that waste from escaping. What do you think astronauts do with that waste? Well, they recycle it. They like to say that today's pee is tomorrow's tea. Water is very expensive to send up to the space station, so astronauts recycle everything they can, even pee. To help make sure there's a work-life balance, astronauts get Sundays off. Astronauts like to have fun in their free time. The space station actually has a projector. Tim Peake got to watch Star Wars in space. Chris Hadfield famously brought his guitar to the space station, although it's a little harder to play without gravity. A lot of astronauts dabble in photography. Here's a photo of Scotland, taken by the astronaut Alexander Gerst. Wow! There are psychological challenges as well. You are confined in a small space for months on end, and isolated from the rest of the world. Often, the ISS only has three crew members on board. This means you really need to make sure you don't get on each other's nerves. But what happens to the human body if you're not wearing a spacesuit and you're not on board a space station? Well, with no oxygen, you begin to suffocate and the pressurized gases within your body begin to expand in the depressurized vacuum of space. Gases in your lungs and the rest of your body expand incredibly quickly, damaging your internal organs. The liquid in your body starts to boil because the lower the pressure, the lower a liquid's boiling point. This is also why water boils faster at the top of a mountain than it does at the bottom. But so long as you're wearing your spacesuit with a helmet as well, everything will be okay. So, you have your spacesuit and you're ready to go to space. How far away are we from getting there? Well, even though the International Space Station is traveling at an altitude of 400 kilometers, technically space is only 100 kilometers above our heads. That means for me, here in Glasgow, technically I'm closer to space than I am to Dundee. And now suddenly my dreams of becoming an astronaut don't seem that far away. I hope you've enjoyed learning about what happens to the human body in space. And I hope it means that you are one step closer to becoming an astronaut as well. If you have any questions, please leave a comment on our Facebook page or tweet us at GSC1. Now, I don't know about you, but I think I need to sit down to try and get used to Earth's gravity again here on Earth. That's all from me. I'll see you next time on GSC at home.